Hey guys, I'm Amy, and you've landed on Bell Loves Bargains. That's my cow, Effingham, and sometimes he co-hosts with me. He's got a lot to say. This channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. And why? Because everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar and a quarter, people. So stick around, consider subscribing, and don't forget to give me that big thumbs up. And if you want to know more about the four uploads I do every week, just check out the description box for more information. Enjoy! Hey guys, welcome to Bell's Bargains. My name is Amy. Guess what today is? Can you guess? Can you guess? It's the ninth day of 12 Dollar Tree days of Christmas. All right, so I just, first of all, if you're new here, stick around because it's a whole bunch of fun. And this is, I have 10, 11, 12, three more videos coming out with the 12 days of Christmas crafts, 100% Dollar Tree supplies, except for that one right there, which is um, family Bibles. But other than that, Okay, so <clears throat> let's see. I wanted to recap just a little bit because, well, I'm going to recap what I've done. But I thought, you know what? I need to tell you guys what the actual ones are. So today is day number nine, right? So nine is nine ladies dancing, eight maids of milk, and seven swans of swimming, six geese of laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Okay, we pretty much know it all. We get a little confused, don't we, on which one goes on which days. Like, is it nine maids of milk and eight ladies dancing? No, it's nine ladies dancing, eight maids milking. So, let's just really quickly here. On the first day, forget that. Let's just start at number seven, six, eight, eight. And then I'll take you back to what I've done today. All right, so this down here, you would have to have watched the video the other day. But this is number eight. So on the eighth day of Christmas, my DT gave to me eight squares, square. What? Eight squares for quilting. And this is a beautiful table runner. Seven children playing. It's a really cute little cottage house all lit up. Six candies caning. And this is such an adorable garland with six candy canes made into hearts. Five golden rings. I think it just spit at the camera. This is actually, I used five of the round um, gold wreath things, right? They come in a three pack. Five golden rings, four books with words. That's one that's the family Bibles. But it's so cool because it has the nativity. Can you guys see it up there? It has the nativity scene on it and the three wise men. It's just a very cool craft. Three silver bells, two oven i'm off to two oven gloves and a gnome in a christmas tree okay <clears throat> so we are on day number nine on the ninth day of christmas my dt gave to me nine reindeer prancing <laughs> instead of nine ladies dancing it's nine reindeer prancing you guys i love this craft now i'm gonna tell i'm gonna show you how i made it here in just a few minutes but before i do <coughs> sorry this is for my kitchen, which I'm getting ready to redo all farmhouse. So I definitely made this farmhouse so that it can be a Christmas decoration for my kitchen moving forward. But check it out. And I made it standing so it can go on the counter. Don't have to hang it because I hate too many things that hang on the wall. I don't know what this stuff back there is. But anyway, so I really like things that I can just place and not have to hang on the wall. Okay, but let me talk about this. So the, the forks, look, they're all different. It's come on. It's cute, it's so cute. However, I'm gonna put in a couple things. I might have used a bigger board because it was hard to get them all on here. And then again, I was like, yeah, but that makes it nice and small and compact. So I don't know, you tell me what you think. And um, also I did the tags for their names, but I could have written it on there, which I thought about doing that. I don't know, there's so many ways that you could change it. But of course, because I know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Okay, so I think it's really cute. Nine reindeer prancing. And let's see, let me just show you how I did this, but I've got it. I'm going to talk a little bit about this on the voiceover. These were really hard to do. And although a few of them broke, like, look, we're missing part there. I just thought it made it look almost more realistic because, or look, he's only got three. Because, well, deer with their antlers or any animal with their antlers, so their antlers will break off and whatnot. So I thought, why are reindeer any different? Well, they're not. 
So I was like, some of the broken antlers are cool because these forks, when I went to bend them, would break. So let me just watch how I made this. On the first day of Christmas, my DT gave to me a gnome in a Christmas tree. On the second day of Christmas, my DT gave to me two oven gloves and a gnome in a Christmas tree. On the third day of Christmas, my DT gave to me three silver bells, two oven gloves, and a gnome in a Christmas tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my DT gave to me four books with words, three silver bells, two oven gloves, and a gnome in a Christmas tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my DT gave to me five golden rings, four books with words, three silver bells, two oven gloves, and a gnome in a Christmas tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, my DT gave to me six candies caning, five golden rings, four books with words, three silver bells, two oven gloves, and a gnome in a Christmas tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, my DT gave to me seven children playing, six candies caning, five golden rings, four books with words, three silver bells, two oven gloves, and a gnome in a Christmas tree. On the eighth day of Christmas, my DT gave to me eight squares for quilting, seven children playing, six candies caning, five golden rings, four books with words, three silver bells, two oven gloves, and a gnome in a Christmas tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my DT gave to me nine reindeers prancing, eight squares for quilting, seven children playing, six candies caning, five golden rings, four books with words, three silver bells, two oven gloves, and a gnome in a Christmas tree. Let's get to this. So there's the forks. I bought three packages that had three each in them. I, if I had, in hindsight, I should have bought an extra one just in case I really messed one up so I wasn't thinking, I always buy extra, right? And I have this little table um, thing and it didn't work. It just didn't hold it down well enough in the end. I was like, nah, forget it. I'm just better off to hold it. By the way, the wood box next to it, at first I was going to use that, but I couldn't get the Happy Easter off of it and I decided not to ruin it. So FYI. So I don't end up using that. I end up using the sign instead. But <clears throat> I'm just trying to pry them, uh, separate the four prongs so there's some separation, whether it was front to back or side to side, and then giving little bends in it. Again, I'm just trying to make them all different, and that one, the very tip broke off, but it was fine. So this is the sign now that I'm going to use, and I was trying to heat it up to get the, but anyway, it just, I was like, whatever, I'm going to take everything off anyway, so I was like, what am I doing? I'm not trying to save the paper underneath. So I'm just taking my scraper and, pl and prying underneath it. I don't want to ruin that center um, sign because I really like it. I'll use it at Easter. So I'm just trying to get it off of there. Yep, and we've got it free and clear, and we don't care about the check paper underneath. But now I'm going to remove the hanger because I'm, obviously I'm not going to hang it. And I've got to remove all four of the wood framing side pieces on it because I'm going to... Um, paint those and whatnot just easier to, to deconstruct it so the way to do that is to put your scraper underneath and go ahead and rip the paper up with it because you don't want to break these I've taken these apart before and I've broken the frame part so I'm, I've learned and this paper peels off super easy now there is another layer underneath this I don't care I'm gonna paint it so I just want a clean surface and I'm gonna sort of farmhouse this right and then I cleaned up all of my frame bits because I want them to go on nice and flat and of course I don't want any leftover stuff on them. So this is just white acrylic paint of course from Dollar Tree and um, I gave it two layers of the white. Yeah, two layers. And then um, I decided to make my 
name tags. And look, I, pra I practiced there. I was like, so what font do I want to use? Blah, blah, blah. So this is why I wrote Dancer first. I don't know, because it's actually dash Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. Somehow I got confused. So I'm just making all of these. Again, like I said before, I could have just written on there. Or maybe I haven't said that yet. It's in my video somewhere. I could have just written on there. But I was so worried about messing that up. And I just kind of like the little name tag effect. Also could have used like a little tie and put it on the on the reindeer and I thought about giving each one of the reindeer sort of a, a personality like putting a little heart on Cupid and a little you know feather bow on Vixen um, but because this piece they ended up being so close together I decided not to I might do one again next year and do that because I thought it'd be really cute to give each one of the reindeer a little personality right put a little um, I don't know I can't think of things to put on them right now but you know what I'm saying um, on Donner, like, anyway, they're okay, so there's lots of ideas, but I didn't, so instead I'm just going to name tag them, give them all a nose, and of course Rudolph gets a red nose. Uh, Rudolph was the hardest one because it was the longest name, but this wasn't as long of a tag, but I wanted to give Rudolph a very different tag, a different shape, and now I've pretty much done all of my bending on the forks. By the way, I did try to heat them up in the oven, that didn't help at all, so don't bother if you decide to do this. And I'm just bending, and once I can get a bend in it and bend it all the way, I'm hitting my camera, sorry, bend it all the way back, it literally snaps, like snaps. And I'm just trying all kinds of ways. This just takes muscle, you guys. And again, if you don't want to do this, just use reindeer, the ornaments from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so now I've got my two coats on, and I want to just stress, distress, distress this up a little bit. So that shoe polish, again, I tell you guys, I love the shoe polish because of the the it's very watery like so to distress something like this is super easy and so that's what I did okay all right enough about that but of course you can use acrylic paint too um, and I love how this came out so I'm just gonna finish my final forks here and I take things and I sort of pry you see I'm just going down the middle prying it just getting that space larger and larger and I'm trying to separate the two in the middle to go to the outside or to go to the back or whatever. Again, the idea was just to get nine different set of antlers. <laughs> they didn't all have to look the same, because I don't think they should. Um, so I like that personality aspect of it, just giving them a little difference. All right, so you can watch me bend a few forks here. Um, again, I did try and heat these up in the oven. Because I thought, man, if I heat, if I got them hot, would they bend easier? No. As a matter of fact, they seem to snap off easier. Like, this is the one with a completely one hole missing antler. And I didn't have any extra forks. So I was like, well, that's going to be it. We're going to have one with three. But I do, I do think it's okay. And I'm just shoving, like, this screwdriver in there to get him to go backwards and forwards. Every other one. There's countless ways. You know, maybe there's an easier way to do this. I don't know. I didn't have a vise, like an actual vise, where I could have put it in there. But the thing you have to be really careful about is these will snap as you're bending them. They're going to snap. So you just have to be really careful. I've sped up this film, but yeah, it was I was taking my time. Okay, so I'm just going to finish up those reindeer. You don't need to watch all that. And then this step you don't have to take. I shoe polish to run along the edge, but in the end I do it black. So don't do this. You don't have to because once I add the frame back on, I don't want those to be white. I want those to be black. So that was kind of a useless thing. And now I'm just going to make some lines, but notice that it's not, I'm, I'm making them so that it would be behind the wood once I put the wood back in because I don't want them to show. So I made sure that I wasn't, um, I don't know if I'm explaining that well. Anyway, because I'm going to do some measuring, I want to make sure that, you know, I get everything in the right spot. So I found, you know, like the center of the lines and whatnot, which is what I'm going to do here. It was hard to get these to fit on there in the end. They do, but yeah, a little bit bigger board might have been a little bit better. Maybe I'll remake it next year and take my, take my reindeer off and remake it. So you're just going to watch me put the rest of these on here. Um, and then I take the frame. You don't need, I don't need to tell you anymore. I take the frame and I use black shoe polish to stain that black. I put a black bead on every reindeer's nose except for Rudolph's. So he gets a red one. Um, 
And that's it. I mean, I'm just going to let you watch me do the rest of this project. I'm just going to do some measuring and whatnot. came out really cute. I hope you guys like it. And um, again, don't forget to tell me in the comments which one is your favorite. So this was, by the way, this was um, like the, the reindeer underneath Rudolph. I made sure it was the one that had the shortest antlers because I knew I was going to take up more space in the middle with Rudolph and his name. FYI. So, and again, it's just a little bit of measuring, not too much. Most of it was visual, but I wanted to make sure that I was evenly spacing my forks on their lines. So that's what I'm doing right here. So pretty simple. All right. Watch the rest of me putting this together and enjoy guys. By the way, I do paint, I do shoe polish the back of this sign so that it would look more complete. You don't have to, but I did. And then just gluing it onto one of those little stands was perfect because then it stands on its own and I don't have to hang it. All right, here you go. Watch the rest. Enjoy.
time because of the forks but you could do this in another way you guys they make cute little ornaments that are little reindeer heads but I wanted this for my farmhouse kitchen which is why I did the forks because I just think it's just isn't that a great kitchen decoration it's reindeer forks these reindeer are forked <laughs> I cannot take credit Marcus made that joke okay anyway so there are other ways that you could do something like this, but I do think it's just super adorable. Now, they were hard to do, don't get me wrong, but the breaking them off was fairly easy. That was just a bend and they'd snap, you know. And um, it took a little muscle, so I had Marcus try it first. He did, um, which one did he do? He did this one, which he got it to twist. I couldn't get it to twist. Actually, that one looks really good. But I was like, no, 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 I need to do it. So I started doing it and just, playing with the, the pliers and stuff and getting them to be all different. That was my goal, was to have them all be different. So it isn't necessarily that they're, they're good, they're just different. I don't know, tell me what you guys think. This happens to be, it might be my favorite now. I'm just saying, um, just kind of, I think it's so cute and clever and I love it. Okay, so everybody, that's it. Tell me down in the comments down below which one is your favorite so far. Now we have nine choices, right? So we've got, a gnome in a Christmas tree. We've got two oven gloves, three silver bells, four books with words, five, oh, five golden rings, five golden rings, six candies caning, seven children dancing, eight squares for quilting, and nine reindeers prancing. Which one? You guys tell me. All right, everybody, have a great day, great week, a great life. And as always, from your singing crafty crafter, on the 10th day of Christmas, my DT gave to me. You'll just have to wait and see. Happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. I will see you back here in two days for day number 10. Bye, besties.